What up, YouTube family, man? Welcome to Symbolic Mind Generation. <clears throat> uh, today's topic, man, I'm going to talk to y'all about the day I got arrested by the DEA and the feds. <clears throat> and how to kind of, when you're doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing, pay attention to things like kind of slow down and follow your instincts. They usually are right. You know, I mean, it was during a time where we knew we was kind of going to be arrested. So it was like either, you know, accept your punishment and whatever you had come and go on the run or do whatever. So, you know, me and me and 53, we kind of had sense on what was going on. Before I get started, though, man, don't forget to go and hit that like button right now. You know what I mean? I got the tip deck right there in the corner. Go on and, uh, you know, scan that and go to the website and get you a tip deck. I mean, they come in handy. Trust me. You know, it'd be times where, man, you might not like the servers in the uh, in the restaurant and you don't want to leave a tip. You can leave one of, you know, certain, you know, cars say different thing about the service. It kind of keep you from being confrontational with the waitress. Instead of just leaving without saying nothing, you can you can, you can let them know, you know, something and, and still leave. So they still get your word in. The tip, that come in handy, man. All right. Let's go back to 2002. Around the spring of 2002 is when this investigation really took off when they started tapping people's phones. And I was with Sprint at the time, man. And let me tell you something, man. Sprint was kind of working me, bro. Like my phone bill, whatever plan I had, my phone bill would like sometimes be $1,200 every month. I just felt like they was getting me. So one day I catch them. I'm like, hold up, I paid this already. Y'all got these charges on here, man, from last month. I'm like, man, I already paid y'all off on everything. So they start giving, they two times, they sent me money back to my car. So I'm like, I had felt like they was getting me. So be, uh, I went and got one of those local, you know, uh, what you call them little trap phones. You can only, only give do local calls unless you get the little phone card to do long distance. I started using that. You know what I mean? Then on May 28th, I'll never forget it, it was uh, Memorial Day weekend, 02, is when they picked me up. Now I'm waiting out to talk to my plug, man. I'm about to get 10 things from him. And, uh, you know, I like to play numbers, though. So I got to get my numbers in. You know, it's about set, it's after 7. I've been waiting on my plug for like two hours. So it's 7 o'clock. It's on Memorial Day weekend. The man I heard the dude kept saying he was in, stuck in traffic. Right? So, uh, he had called and told me that he had his cousin with him, you know, to help him drive over from wherever he was coming from. You know what I mean? So he called and told me he had his cousin, a female. So, I ain't paying no attention to it, but I know that it's time for me to get my numbers in. So, I, you know, I play, you know, I'm shooting at the lottery every day. So, man, I go, and man, I, I got on some uh, little jogger suit. I had, that on, I had on like a, one of those uh, Nietzsche dog, uh, jogger suits. I got on some flip-flops with some socks, bro. I'm, I'm straight bumming it. But the store, you know, the little store that got the numbers right on my next block. So I step out over there and slide and put my numbers in. You know what I mean? So while I'm in the line, you know, waiting to get my numbers in, I get the call that they was there. So I walk back, you know, sit. I come, I sit. I'm in my backyard when I get to my building. You can look over the fence in the back and see who all people park in the back. I don't go back in the house. I don't go back in the house. I think my door unlocked and everything. I go around there, you know, and go, you know, and talk to them and you know, grab the work and take it up in the house. Then I'm going to go and you know, bring their money down. Man, the broad, he said it was his cousin to help him drive. She was the DEA. So the 10 things that I've supposed to have been getting, soon he, they tell me it was on the seat. Soon as before I can uh, you know, grab the thing, they snatch me. And I'll tell y'all about that in a minute. It's called a reverse thing. So instead of them using real dope, they got the fake canisters. Do you know those 10 canisters on my case with me, they carry life. That's like steel possession. They don't use the real dope no more. So they gave me the fake canisters. So I'm like, damn. So I'm just in there, man, and we riding. We riding and shit. And they take me to some little spot on the west side of Cleveland where they was all meeting at. 
You know what I mean? It, it was like a super a supervisor there, and he looked in and made sure that they had me and stuff like that. But they was talking to me on the way, and they were like, man, we thought we missed you. Because I went and got that phone, and I was talking on the little trap, the little local trap phone. I wasn't really doing no business on the other phone, because Sprint was tripping. It was just by coincidence. So they didn't really have me on the phone talking and none of that, bro. They told me, man, we they thought I had got away. I don't know how, you know, considering all you know the shit that was going on. I don't know how they said that, but they told me to my face, like, bro, we thought you was, you know, the way I was moving. They thought I had, you know, they were telling them, man, we didn't even think we was going to get you. Like that little last bus, they thought I was too smart for that. You know what I mean? They thought I would have sensed it and shit. But I you know sometimes, man, when you be moving around so fast and you be in the streets, man, you lose consciousness of what's really going on where you, uh, where you, or your surroundings. Or what, and sometimes you don't really see how shit be looking because you're chasing, 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 chasing. But when you get locked up, bro, it all just comes in, bro. It be cloudy and stuff, but everything just become clear as soon as you get locked up. You see everything. You know what I mean? So it's May 28th, 2002. They got me, man. They take me way out somewhere, bro. I don't know where I was at. No phone calls, no nothing for 48 hours. You know what I mean? Nobody knew where I was at. I'm missing. You know what I mean? I'm bringing Kelly Price to Cleveland that weekend, though. And what happened was I sent Kelly Price her deposit, right? Her husband, her manager at the time. He probably still is. And, uh, they road manager had ran off with 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 their money, a lot of their money. You know, the road manager handled all the concerts and stuff. So they telling me they never got my initial deposit. So we going back and forth, back and forth. What happened was they promised me a show if I would send them another deposit. They said they didn't get the money, but they promised me to do me another show later. They was in Cincinnati and I was in Cleveland. They were like, man, we right here in Cincinnati. We can come right there. So I'm on my way to send a deposit, to wire the deposit, another deposit. But I never make it there. I'm waiting on my plug to come. I never make it. You know what I'm saying? So, man, they sent me all out. And my wife, I had, uh, I was using my wife's phone at the time to talk to them, you know, to Kelly now. So they was calling that number back. So my wife was like, what are you, what are you calling, you know? I'm gone. She called my number. I'm not answering. Bro, she go to my house, bro, and see that my clothes that I was going to wear that night and, my, and the money I was going to put in my pocket was all on the couch right there. She saw that I never grabbed it. But like I said about subconsciously, she don't, she don't, she ain't thinking nothing wrong. Maybe she thinking slight something wrong, but she don't know because I didn't really have her in my business like that. She knew a little something to somebody that's time, but she don't know to clean the house up. So she leave, bro. I got a couple of hundred thousand stashed in there. The money for the 10 things is there. You know what I mean? All that money come up missing. You know what I mean? So, and I know they got it. You know what I mean? People talking about they don't need your money. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? Especially when they already got me on the, on the reverse thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the use of turning that money in for? So anyway, uh, she don't clean the house up. She leave, but she come back the next day. You know what I mean? And when she she walk in on why they were searching, they hadn't even got a warrant yet. They went in my house to beat people in there so that they had to go. They went in there early in the morning. They didn't get the warrant till like four o'clock in the after, you know that evening. But they was in there by the time my girl went on her lunch break at eleven thirty. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm gone. I'm gone. I don't see my brother 53 until a few days later when they didn't ship me from out of there. But mind you, I didn't get no wherever they sent me to. They put me on, had me in a holding cell for like two days, bro. Feed me through there. I'm laying on the floor. I got blankets. I'm just, I'm just like they, ain't, they ain't, they got me. But they ain't man. They violated all my motherfucking rights and them. I'm talking about no calls or nothing. I couldn't let nobody know nothing. So by the time, man, they round up and they finally get my brother and stuff like that, man, and uh, they shipped me to Euclid to one of the little, little, little city jails and stuff, one of the holdovers. And they put us in the same cell to see my brother come in. You know what I mean? We in there, man. I'm in there pouring motherfucking water and shit all up in the vent and shit. We in there tripping like, man, what the fuck? They got to be listening. 
You know what I'm saying? You know how you do when you get arrested. We in here just tripping, like tripping. And uh, like I said, the little the canister shit with no shit, that shit carried a life in it. This, this, that's just like possession. I got a picture of it down in the, in the, uh, on the screen right now so y'all y'all can look at it. You know what I mean? Both of those charges carry life. But unfortunately, you know, I'm glad they only gave me one. You know what I mean? So uh, that whole thing, I didn't even know, bro. Going to trial, I didn't even know I can get life. Man, I never really, I did eight months. I had a year, they called a year of beef back in the early 90s. I did like eight months in the state. Eight and a half months on the year, you know what I mean? And that's my only trouble I ever been in. And that was 10 years prior to this. Almost 10 years, because they used that to enhance me. So it was not quite 10 years. I was just missing everything. You know what I mean? But uh the plug they got knocked off. One of their trucks they got knocked off, the refrigeration went out or some shit, and they had to go get another truck. By the time they did all that, they was on to them, they got them with the truck. So they immediately just started boom, boom, boom. Everybody they was selling to, they was knocking them off. And I was I was on the top of the list for the Cleveland area. You know what I mean? So that whole thing, the whole Fed thing, I didn't know nothing about the Feds, the whole shock factor and all of that. And uh, I didn't have no fear. The only fear that I had was my life. Like how, how old was I going to be when I got out of this trouble? And that's the most scary thing in the world, man. Cause you like when you in there, I'm in my early 30s when they get me. Almost my mid 30s. I'm 34, about to be 35 when they get me. So that's a bad time to get a life sentence. Some people would say no nah, because I lived a little bit. You know what I mean? But it's a bad time because I missed half of my 30s and all of my 40s. Usually that's the time when, you know, if you're going to make it in the world, in the financial world, you, you, that's when you really learn shit. You know what I mean? That's when your growth into what you're going to be in, in your 30s and 40s sets you up for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? So I remember a man like, man, I'm going to be 50 some years old when I get out of jail. That's what I was, 50. You know what I mean? So starting over at 50, bro, is a fucking hell. It's the worst thing ever, bro. Like, people look at you like, I can't go, and like, if I want to go get a job now in my 50s, it's like, man, you know, like, I'm in my 50s, bro. I'm on this job right here next to this dude, 22. He making more than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm supposed to be, you know what I mean? I'm supposed to be owning some shit. So that's the downfall of, of uh, getting caught up at a late, you know, I can say in your, in your mids, in your mids. You know what I mean? You get caught in your mids, bro. It's rough, bro. You know, you get it looking at the year like, damn, they're going to be 60 when they come home. Like, who want to come home at 60? You know, even though when you're in there at the time, like, nigga, I'm free, but nigga, you home at 60. Start over at 60. You just ain't got a whole lot of summers left. You know what I'm saying? You just ain't got a whole lot of summers left, man. You know what I mean? So don't, you know, don't, I ain't got time, bro. I got about 20 summers left around this motherfucker, man. I got about 20 summers left, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna let y'all fuck with me in my 20 summers, man. I'm about to enjoy these motherfuckers, man. I got about 20 summers left, bro. God damn. You know what I'm saying? But listen, bro, the whole uh the whole first thing, man, that's the most important thing, bro. That pre-trial stage, bro. Man, you gotta make sure you're on point, bro. You gotta make sure you're because you can beat them. You can beat them, but if you go in there like me and you ain't never been in trouble and you don't know nothing, and blah, they blind and your lawyer. Most lawyers work with them. So you think you're paying a lawyer all that money, bro, you forget about all that. Don't even do it. Don't even do it, bro. If you're going to need a lawyer, bro, that, uh, you need a big-time lawyer that they fear. And, and, they, and they, ain't, they might not even be in your area. You got to find somebody that can get jurisdiction in your area. But around in your area, usually the, the feds and the DA, they got the whole court thing on lock, bro. All them lawyers, man, they be faking. Yeah, we gonna fight, man. That shit is bullshit, bro. You know what I mean? My, I got my court got disrupted so many of me. I was fifty three, man. My, man, I was giving them hell, bro. I started reading them books when I got arrested, man. I got the sentencing guideline book, the federal code of procedure book. I started getting cases all that shit, man. I was going in there, fuck this lawyer, cause I had paid a lawyer, and he gave my money back, said he couldn't represent me properly. You know what I mean? So. 
excuse me, I had paid a lawyer because he was, you know, he ended up giving me part of my money back to my girl because he said he couldn't represent me properly. You know what I mean? So I go in there with a bullshit ass lawyer and I got to get a public defender because my, you know, my shit coming up. Nobody would take my case, bro. That's how I know, man. It's just bullshit. People, you know what I mean? These jurors, they going to come in there. They swear these people is, is down by law, bro. You know what I'm saying? They swear they is down by law, man. Y'all, I mean, all the shit that they do that came out of my trial, they still found me guilty. So much bullshit, man. With, with evidence, with shit wrong. Man, they still find you. It's just like the shit just, I don't know what it is, bro. I think they actually talk to somebody on the jury and be like, you, you know, you find them guilty. That's what I think they do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think they do. So that whole shock factor when I got arrested, man, it wasn't so much about being scared and none of that. I was scared of, of how old I was. So if you're going through out here, man, you're doing that shit, man. If you're in your 30s and you're still hustling, bro, you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. You know what I mean? This shit supposed to be a young man game, an in and out game, bro. That's what this game is, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. If you're in your 30s, man, you lost like I was. Like I was lost. You know what I mean? We was actually happy to be arrested. Man, we was happy to get out of that shit that we was into. You know what I mean? Fucking with them cartels and shit. We was happy to get out of that shit, to get arrested, bro. You know what I mean? At the end, we was just happy, bro. We, you know what I mean? So that's what it was like for me, man, my first day in there. And DA and the feds was on the scene at the crib and shit. And uh, it was hor It was horrifying. And then you settle in and shit. You just realize you're in a world of trouble and shit. And you start working on your game plan. You know what I mean? But I don't get no lawyer, no hundred thousand dollars, man. They just gonna take it. You know what I mean? So you better off having some say so at your own shit and doing your own fight. Or use it if you can get a you get a good plea with your money, man, get the best plea you can. But going in there in the trial with one of them lawyers, bro, it ain't, it ain't even worth it. Now you're gonna get all the time that they can give you because you're going to trial. You know what I mean? That's like I said, they only go to trial at like 5% of their trial. Don't nobody go to trial in the field. You know what I mean? Because you can't win. You know what I mean? But I will say this for you. Always take the stand, bro. Them days are not taking the stand or they can bring up your priors. The people know you got priors anyway, the jury. That's why you ain't taking the stand. Everybody know that. So the days are not taking the stand, them days is over with, bro. If you're in some trouble, man, get your ass on the stand, man, and fight for your life, bro. Yeah, I did that, but I didn't do this. That's what you do. You know what I mean? Don't forget to hit that like button, man. Go on ahead and hit that like button. Let y'all know what the first day was like for me, man. It was it was a little scary. This is about my generation.